A Maryland woman finds squatters in her bedroom and $49,000 in belongings cleaned out. And I thought this would be a pretty crazy article to read. So a woman returning home from vacation found a couple laying in her bed and property worth tens of thousands of dollars gone. So a woman in Greenbelt, Maryland returned home from vacation April 5th to discover her front door damaged and her possessions cleared out of the apartment. Next, she found a couple laying on her bed together. The resident located two suspects, a black male adult and a white female adult laying on one bed and the only piece of furniture still in the home, Greenbelt police said. As the panicked resident began to ask how they got in and what they wanted, the suspects told her they took all of their property. According to the police, they then became aggressive with the victims before fleeing on foot in an unknown direction. Not only were they in my home, but everything in my home was gone except for my bed because he details how he loved my bed so much. The victim told local outlet Fox 5. And I'm like, who are you? And he says my name. And he's like, you didn't pay your rent. I'm like, what are you talking about? I paid my rent. The suspects are still on the run, and Greenbelt police request anyone with information on their identities to come forward. So here's actually the video of it. Please show me how you got inside. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you step by step. Because there's three ways you can get in, in, in your apartment. You got everything, man? It's up. Excuse me. Excuse me. your apartment. Excuse me. Yeah, please get all your things. I'm going to show you nothing about it. That's that's honestly pretty scary. So the stolen belongings amounted to more than forty thousand dollars, police said. Which is kind of crazy, like, when why do you have $49,000 worth of items inside your apartment? That being said, you have the freedom to do so. Elsewhere, some police departments have begun encouraging residents to utilize their right to self-defense against burglars. The Florida Sheriff, Bob Johnson, defended a local homeowner who shot at a burglar entering their home. While the identity of the homeowner who fired the weapon is unknown, Sheriff Johnson assured residents that they would not be in trouble for defending their homes. Johnson clarified that the homeowner did not hit the intruder and did nothing wrong in the process. If someone is broken into your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do, actually, Johnson said in a press conference following the break-in. And here's the thing. This kind of situation kind of underscores the importance of having like good homeowner's insurance, good insurance in general, maybe even like an umbrella insurance policy, just to help cover the losses from something like this, right? Because look, the items that was stolen from her, gone. She's not going to get those back. If these people are even caught, maybe, maybe they'll get something back, but not really. Like the $49,000 worth of items are basically just gone. So this is like a situation where there's actually two things that are going to have. Basically, kind of like an umbrella insurance policy or just some sort of insurance policy that does cover theft or potential damages to your apartment or whatever, right? So, I mean, she probably is already paying like for like renter's insurance and all that. Next is to have an emergency fund because this is... An emergency, but it kind of is like now in a situation where like, okay, I had $49,000 worth of my items stolen. I no longer feel safe in this apartment because obviously people could just break in, but I have an emergency fund, meaning I could just go and find a different place to live, which is something that she should do. She should go find a different place to live because obviously this is not a safe area for her. If she could just 
have people break in to a place like this. So this is why it's very important to have a good financial well-being, to be debt-free, to have an emergency fund, because crazy things like this sometimes happen. And if you do have like a healthy emergency emergency fund, I'm talking like three to six months of monthly expenses, something like this sucks, but it's not necessarily life damaging because you have these like emergency funds that you could technically replenish things, right? Like you could replenish like a fridge if you need a fridge. You could you could use some of the funds to go and rent a brand new apartment. You could use something to maybe go to a different state and live there. So it's just a different way to really think about it. Because this is like a really scary situation to walk into your apartment and discover that all of your items have been stolen and that two people are basically doing whoopee on your bed all the time while you were gone just because they love the bed. It's a really scary situation for a lot of people. And you got to keep in mind too, right? This homeowner, this apartment owner, whatever, right? Came to her house, probably by herself, opened the door and discovered something's wrong, right? Imagine if you are living alone and something like this happens to you. This is a very scary situation. So I'm happy that she is safe, that nothing necessarily bad happened to her for confronting them in this manner, even though they apparently did get aggressive with her at the end. That wasn't shown, but apparently it happened. I'm glad that she's okay. The reality is that people need to start having like emergency funds so that when really bad, crazy stuff happens, it becomes more of like a hassle instead of a true emergency. Because if you have money in the bank, okay, you could take care of these things around the house like at the snap of your fingers, right? You could go buy a brand new table. You could go buy a brand new fridge. You could go buy a brand new TV if you really needed to. If you view that as like an emergency, you could replenish your food and drinks and all that kind of stuff, right? You could take care of yourself with the emergency fund. But if she like showed up to here and she had no money in the bank after all this happened, she's kind of screwed, right? She's now having to deal with a lot of stuff in a very disastrous fashion because now she's just trying to like work herself out of a hole instead of basically having money on the side that she could just, you know, cover this hole or like fill up this hole like at the snap of her finger. So if you want to learn how to get out of debt and master your money so that things like this are more of a hassle instead of an emergency, go to 40 com. Feel free to give your thoughts because honestly, I find this to be very scary for anyone who ends up living by themselves.